part three. Yeah. Wind up poking a hole in the water jug. I would not be happy about that. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Get right. Back on track. There we go. It's a point over there sticking out a rock point. Exactly what I'm headed for. Best way to do it on this here lake is and everywhere. You know what the saying is, short distance between two point A and point B is a straight line. Trust me, I want the shortest distance. Indeed I do. All right, this trip has went really well. So I know I've spent 40 minutes on it because I've made two 20 minute videos. So, it looks like I might be about another, I'm guessing, about another maybe 20 minutes before I get to the landing spot. So that would be a grand total of an hour for this trip. That's not too shabby. You know, of course that is one way. Still have to get back to the island. But, yee-haw, people, yee-haw. Right? Right. <laughs> oh, these videos be funny to watch later on. And I'd like to do a shout-out to my grandson, Ethan. My birthday boy here very soon. He's about to be older. <laughs> Five years old. Five years old the boy be. Who would have thunk it? Time sure does fly. Watch me have that wrong. Watch me have that wrong. Yeah, he gotta be. He ain't gonna be six. He gotta be five. It's amazing how time flies. You know. Like my saying goes, wife probably gets tired of hearing me say it, but. Time flies like smoke through a keyhole. You have an old house, uses them skeleton keys to lock up some of the doors. Take you and smoke you a cigarette and you got the air pool going through the house. And uh, some of that smoke will actually travel through that keyhole. And once it gets through there, of course it's gone. You ain't never gonna see it again. Just like time, gone. Like smoke through a keyhole. The only thing I'm dreading about all this, go over here and get to Gabbard Island, do us fishing, have a good time. Then you gotta come back over here on Sunday, drop Joe off. That's not so bad to come back over here because we have two paddlers. But then, depending on the weather conditions, old Rob got to paddle all the way back to the island by myself again. And being that's a Sunday, we're going to have a whole lot more boat traffic out here on this lake. And knowing my luck, the way things go, it's going to be a whole lot windier too. And I'm waiting for it to be so windy sometime, I don't make it to where I'm going. You know what I'm saying? The first day I come out here, that's what I thought it was going to be. I was going back behind me, you know, back towards the island. Canoe got all crooked, facing over that way, towards the bank. I could not straighten this canoe out for nothing. I fought with it for 10 minutes, paddling as hard as I could to try to get it turned back in the direction I wanted towards the island. Jeez. Said a few choice words too. Especially my first time in a canoe in what 35 years probably. Not cool. <laughs> Not cool at all. Especially when you're trying to get somewhere and the wind it won't let you. And that wind in a canoe, it can stop you from going where you're planning on going. That's what I'm thinking going hope don't happen when it comes time for me to go home. Wind get blowing too hard, I won't get out of that cove. I'll be stuck over there.
try to keep a little bit of extra food just in case. And I don't know whether anybody else has, you know, got that place reserved or not. You know, when my time's up. Guess you could just sit there, wait on someone to come by in a boat and be like, hey, you know, on the over yonder over there. <laughs> you know? Put my canoe and everything up there, just tow the canoe, you know? Well, people, I can actually see all the slips over there. I will take that. I'm almost over to the no wake zone. So that's pretty cool, too. wondering what I'm doing when I do do that every time I paddle or sometimes when I paddle I'm trying to knock some of the water off the end of this paddle before I pull it over top of the canoe again well that's a steep rock uh, bluff over there A little bit of something a lot of people probably don't know on how to read a lake. Of course, a lot of people does know how to how to read a lake. But if you're looking at the bank, a big deep water reservoir like this. If the bank goes straight up and down above the water, it does the same thing below the water, straight down. Be a good spot over there to pitch around some baits. Try to catch some gills. My favorite top fish in bluegill fishing. I like me some crappies right well too. Mighty tasty. And any kind of pan fish, I can clean them suckers right up absolutely guaranteed to be 100% boneless. You will never, ever get a bone in one of my bluegill flats or shell cracker or, or uh, crappies or any pan fish. Now when you get into catfish and bass, <clears throat> then my filleting skills is a little bit questionable. See some smoke over yonder. <clears throat> Somebody must have a campfire going. Let's see how long has this video been? Oh, only about eight minutes, forty-five seconds right now. Almost half of the other part one, part two. I'm going to kind of flip this around. Maybe you can see that bank over there a little bit. I don't know, though. No, you can't see it real good. Well, I tried. Oh, yeah, I noticed the... Uh, Notice this the other day, Star Points got him a new, a new, uh, a new slip out there. It's not over with the other slips. It's off in a little cove over there. For many years, there used to be a place over there where you could just go, and they, they had a couple houseboats moored over there. I guess something anchored to the bottom of the lake, come up, and then, you know, have some tires or something on there floating. And uh, they could just tie off them houseboats. So those moorings and there really was there wasn't no slip or nothing over there he was out in pretty much open water you just had a place to you know 
tie your boat to. But now it's actual covered slip floating over here. That'd be pretty cool. Man, only bad thing. Oh, I even have a back on this on this seat, but I'm gonna tell you what. Let me straighten this up, and I'm gonna have me a vape. Uh, or I do any long, long distance canoe expeditions like from Pittsburgh to New Orleans. I'm gonna have to have me some kind of better seat. I'm also got a lot of contemplating to do on things too. On exactly just this is exactly how to go about all that stuff. You know, I'm gonna have to practice taking that tent down and setting it up and taking it down, set it up, take it down, do it every day for about three months straight. I got need to be quick on that. Either that or get a different type of tent. If I paddle all day long, you know, they paddle 10 hours a day, and you pull over, give yourself three or four hours of light to make camp, like firewood, you know, put up tent, all that jazz. Can't be spending eight hours to put up tent. Won't work. Have to go fashion up pole holders and you know all this stuff. No, no, no. And also, some of my whole plans were to take that goal zero uh, solar panel. Open it up, lay it on the canoe, and then strap it in with bungee cords. And that way, you could collect the power of the sun the entire day while you're paddling. And now I'm not so sure. I almost think that solar panel is too big. You might need one step down. Have to get the measurements on the Boulder 100. Of course, that's 100 watts less, 100 watts less power to get, gather the sun's energy, you know, but... I think 100 watts would probably do it, I guess. I don't know. We shall see. Yeehaw, I can actually see the van over there. Not a soul inside anywhere else, though. Lots of boats. Cars over there. I just thought about it. I never did have my vape, did I? Well, let's fix that. I got one for you. There's three flies in the bathroom. How can you tell which one's the hippie? Give up. It's the one that's on the pot. <laughs> oh, I think my mom told me that way back a long time ago. And uh, there's another one, you know. There's three flies in the kitchen. How can you tell which one's the cowboy? Well, of course, he's the one that's on the range, you know? Crazy jokes they come up with. Not really my style of jokes, but I figured I'd tell them anyhow, keep it kind of clean here on the, on the video device. <laughs> minutes 25 seconds yep this trip is going to have taken about an hour uh, which is super fast strange being down here when the water's down this low I'm used to being it used to being here when it's up to uh, summer pool I think that's 657 feet. I think I think that's right. And they do this 
winter drawdown, man, it really exposes the rock shorelines. I'd rather have it up higher myself, but I reckon they've got some pretty good reasons for drawing it down this far. I guess so it can, now I think about it, probably to hold all the water that they get from the rainy season, fall and winter and stuff. Nope, I reckon we'll be having a pretty good campfire tonight. If we don't go fishing back in one of the creeks somewhere. Oh, you have to bear with me for a second. Let me stretch a little bit. Hey, do a yard. It's 7 o'clock in the morning, Jazz. I think I just now saw uh, that dude Joe Rager pull up. I can see way over there to where the van is. Pretty sure that's his car. Uh, little silver jobber. There's some old, uh, older houseboats over there. They're smaller, much smaller than what I'm used to. But I wouldn't mind having one of them. It'd be all right. A lot easier to maneuver around too. You get them big, bigger the boat you get in, that's more surface area for the wind to push on. And uh, you know it. <laughs> you know it when you're in the houseboats. Had about maybe two disasters, you know, over all the years. Me and my brother used to come down here renting houseboats, you know, and all involved wind. One of them right over here to Star Point. Just about tore the gas pumps clean out of the marina. Luckily, uh, <clears throat> Frog had a bunch of the guys over there. I think there's about six, seven, maybe even eight of them. And they all got out there in the dock and, uh, Yep, that's Joe. Uh, all got out there on the dock and started, uh, you know, they grabbed the rails of that houseboat as it was coming up on the dock and uh, started pushing it. And they pushed it back down the water so we didn't tear them gas pumps out. And we just about did, too, I'm telling you. Russell was driving, though. Ain't nothing to do with me. He was the big houseboat captain, you know what I'm saying? So, uh yeah, man. Oh, I see Joe Asan or Bregasan. He's got him on one of these, one of these bright fluorescent looking shirts right here. That's a pretty good idea, I say. I guess when I get over there, I'll go ahead and shut this off. This one may run a little bit over 20 minutes. Yeah, it's going to. Only got two minutes left, and I'm more than, more than two minutes away. Y'all can't even see them boats and stuff over there, can you? Well, if I had it set up better, you probably could. If I had the right tripod, you could, I could just like grab it and turn it a little bit and, and show y'all to the boats and stuff. But Some nice boats over there. <clears throat> sure is. Some nice pontoons too. <clears throat> I think a pontoon's one of my more favorite boats. Got you a big fishing platform you can walk around on. And all that, all that jazz. All our fish swirl. This fish better run and hide. Here soon, it's coming. Rob's gonna be going on the fish 
fish killing time. Well, not just the killing, just to be killing. I'm gonna be fish eating time. First time ever I've been doe hollow in my entire life. Been here five whole days and ain't drowned one worm. Boat over there has got a 300 horsepower on it. Heck, you need 300 horsepower on a boat for it. That's like my Monte Carlo on the water. You know, it's got over 300 horses, but still. So, hopping it. What's that, man? Did you get my text? Nope. I made it. Yep. All right. Yeah, my phone has not been in the in the five square inch service area today. Yeah, I've been in and out of Yep. Did you lose GPS signal any on the way down here? Uh, no, yeah. No, but it, it downloaded it offline. Did it? Yeah. Nice. Down there, closer to where them red things are, brother. I gotta save this here, save this here ramp for the for the big boats. Nice, you know, because what I did, man. I'll oh, hold on here. All right, I'm sorry, people. I've been talking to Joe and not paying attention. I'm gonna shut this video off. Part three is done. See y'all after a while.